everyone. This is, um, I'm Opal Mitchell and um, uh, I'm doing the Sewing 101 program. Are you filming? <laughs> yes, I'm live. Yes, but they're not ready. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, um, someone was asking for supplies for our program that we have on Thursday nights. Um, I do a um, crafting with Opal on Thursday night, and next week I'm going to be showing how to make a lanyard, and we have free supplies that we'll be handing out for that program. And one of my coworkers has someone on the phone asking about the supplies. Um, so sorry about that. Um, anyway, um, this is the Sewing 101 program I've been doing on Fridays at 1 o'clock. Um, I think we're going to redo and not necessarily have um, just a sewing program on Fridays anymore. Um, I've kind of run out of things to cover that are basic beginner um, sewing things. Um, and that's what this was geared towards, new people that had just bought a sewing machine. Um, that just needed the basics on getting to know their machine and I've really covered all the basic stuff that I can so um, if you're interested in like actual sewing projects you should check out the crafting with opal programs I do on Thursday night because um, half the time on the crafting with opal programs I do it's uh, sewing projects and they're always beginner friendly um, sewing projects so um, I would just um, say, hey, just check out um, the Crafting with Opal programs um, for more sewing type programs. Um, on Fridays, um, it may be once a month instead of every week. Um, it just kind of depends. But I'm going to kind of change it up and it's not going to be just sewing. I'm going to be covering uh, just different types of crafts. Um, I'm thinking about doing basics on a bunch of different crafts like if you're interested in the getting started into maybe embroidery or cross stitch or something like that um, I'm thinking that's probably what I'm going to do on Fridays um, and it'll probably try to stay around the one o'clock hour um, and it'll have a different name to it but um, and it may be just once a month or um, bi-weekly like every other week um, I'm just gonna have to see how much um, as far as ideas I can come up with for for that program and that will depend on how often I do it. Alright, um, so today um, with this program I'm going to be showing you different um, types of seams that you can do with sewing. Um, I really, I was looking through books just looking at different things and realized that I didn't know that um, I've only done one basic type of seam and I didn't realize there was a lot of different ways to do it and they're all very basic and they're all very good to know about so I thought that's what I would cover today um, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into that I'm going to sew a couple of things together and then I'm going to show you what I'm talking about as far as the seams on it I'm going to show you me sewing it and then um, and then how you actually what you do with the seam afterwards whenever you sew it um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch and actually I'm going to show you the book that I got this information out of because it's a really good book. Let's see here. So let me show you the book I'm talking about. And um, it I'm just covering just seams, but this has got a lot of other really good things in it. It's called Simply Sewing with a French Twist. And it's just, um, I thought it was really nice. It had a lot of just different basic um, sewing information in it and some different little projects that would be fun to try out. But it's it's the, you know, you can see my R2-D2 bookmark that I have in there. Um, so this will be available for checkout um, in a few days. Um, we have to quarantine everything that gets checked out, so... Whoa! <laughs> I about knocked over my camera. So since I took this home, I'll have to, when I return it, it'll have to be quarantined for three days. So if you're interested in the book, just um, put a hold on it and then um, you'll be able to check it out once it comes off of quarantine. Alright. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to just sew two pieces of fabric together. 
Um, so I can show you some different types of seams that you can do. And this is just a very basic one. And it's always good to start with your needle and the fabric when you start to sew. And you always want to back up. Oh wow, this is backup buttons in a weird place on this machine. Um, so I'm going to back up a couple of stitches, and only a couple is plenty. And I'm just doing a basic seam. And then when you get to the end, I'll go forward a little bit more. You'll want to back up just a couple. And then sew off your fabric. This is my basic one. And always pull your threads back on the back side of your machine whenever you've done that. And then I'm going to... Actually, I don't have my light turned on. It might have been kind of hard to see. Okay. And I've got a bunch of different things I'm going to be sewing today to show you. Um, and that's just some of the pieces that I have cut out for that. And I'm going to show you... Um, Whenever you're doing any kind of seam, you always want to press out your seam. Oh, I put the wrong and oh well. It's not going to make a difference. But whenever you're sewing things together, you want the right sides facing each other. So we're just going to pretend that that's correct. I'm not going to rip that out just to show you. But whenever you have to, it, it's always a good idea to open up your seams like so, and to have an iron ready, I'm going to try to get this a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing, but um, just open up your seams, and you can press it with your fingers to press it out, but then also you want to press it with your iron to get it pressed out good. Um, and that's that's a, a basic seam that you would do. And like I said, ignore that I, ha I have the wrong side of this fabric facing this direction. But um, to edge your seams, like say it's fabric that's going to fray on you, there's a couple of different things you can do. One of them is you can take some pinking shears, like so, and you can cut and I need, well, just cut your um, edge of your fabric. So that's one way of with your seams to just cut it if it's fabric that's going to fray a lot on you. But um, you can use the pinking shears. That'll help. And then um, another way is you can actually I'm going to show you here um, on the sewing machine. You can take this and you can, I know this is a lot of moving around. Uh, oops, I'm tightening the wrong thing. I'll lower this. Then another way you can do is you take the fabric, and it would be a good idea before you actually sew your seam to do this but I'm, I'm doing it after the fact. But you would want to do like a zigzag stitch on it to keep it from fraying. So in order to do a zigzag stitch, you would go over to your sti stitch um, selector here and change it. So this one is a three for your zigzag stitch. And um, sometimes you want to and do uh, the width of it on how wide you want that stitch to be or the length of it. I think these are very average so I'm going to keep those settings on it and so you would actually I don't know what it's going to look like so I'm going to take some test fabric and sew real quick to see what my zigzag stitch is going to look like. If it's bigger or too big or too small. Um, when you're doing it for a seam, it's a good idea to do the zigzag a little bit smaller than that 
that one um, comes open a little too much um, so we're going to shorten that some because you don't need it really wide I'm gonna go down to two and see um, if that's gonna shorten it up enough for me so let's try that again I like that but I think I want it a little bit smaller so let me go a little bit smaller yeah I like that that seems small enough so now that I figured out how small I want my zigzag to be you can kind of see a difference in it too I wanted it to be a little bit smaller so what you would do is you want to see where your needle is going to hit it for one thing and I don't want it to hit off the fabric but close to the edge as possible so I'm going to move my and I'm going to actually alright so see that's fallen where I want it to fall so I'm going to go ahead and this is just to reinforce the seam so if the fabric is the type of fabric that's going to fray on you, you this will help with the fraying because some fabrics are more prone to that than others okay so that's in um, two different ways for seams as far as you I know the white on the white thread on white fabric is hard to see, but just putting a zigzag stitch on the edge of your fabric will help with the seam. And then, like I said, you can also do what the cut it with the pinking shears that'll have that little zigzag um, look to it, and that will help on your seams for just a, a flat seam. I'm trying to open it back up. Not enough room. And you can see this one does fray some. So um, that, that's always a good idea to do that. So that's one way. So we're going to switch back over here. And I'm going to show you some more. Um, also, say that you're going to sew... Um, you can also do that, like if you're sewing two pieces together get two more pieces. Um, say that I'm going to, this would be a bigger project of course, but um, I'm going to get some scissors to give me a straight edge because I'm going to need a straight edge. But that side is straight but I also want my bottom edge to be straight too. Let's see, I'm just cutting this so I can show you but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down this edge and then sew across this edge and I'm going to show you as far as um, how you sew um, to do like a corner and then also what you can do um, what you need to do to that corner once you sew it so we've already um, switched our machine over to a zigzag stitch so I'm going to switch it back to just a, a straight stitch um, and then um, I'm just going to sew this piece of fabric together and I'm going to start with this edge and you always back up a couple get to the edge of where you're going to turn you put your needle in your fabric then you lift up your pressure foot and my fabrics not lined up with my pressure foot so I didn't go over quite far enough so I'm just going to manually turn it one time to get one more stitch in there so I can get it where I want it oh I I forgot I changed it to a really small stitch 
I'm gonna turn it back to a normal length because this is a really short one that I just did. Okay, I'm gonna back up a couple. All right, all right. So whenever you do this type, oops, and you always want to make sure that you're thread goes through the middle one. Okay, so I just got through sewing. Um, say that you're doing something that um, you're going to be doing corners. Um, I've done this side and then I turned and went down this side. Um, there's a couple of different things that you can do with this one. You don't want a lot of bulk when it comes to um, when you're turning your... Wow, that was not locked into place. I'm having all kinds of problems today lock that into place. Actually, let me, let me do some readjusting. There we go. That's better. Okay. There's a couple. These are just my regular scissors and these are my pinking shears. But for this one, um, whenever you turn things right side out, your, your corners are going to be too bulky unless you do something about your corners. So I have sewed across there and across there. So there's two different things that you can do. Um, you do want to cut your corner close to where you've sewed, but don't do it right next to where the threads are at. Just as close to it without getting right next to it because you don't want it to come apart. So this will keep your um, when you turn it right side out, it'll keep it from being too bulky. Another thing that you can do, so if you've got your pinking shears, to cut down on that, just take them and cut down the edge also. And that will help you a lot whenever you turn it um, right side out. So you'll have a, a better, and I don't have, I have it at home. Let's see if I have something that I can push that corner out. It's always good to have um, something that will push the ends of your um, fabric out for you. Oh, I think I found one. They sell them, or if you don't have one, um, this these this wooden one that I got right here it came in a package of um, uh, the stuffing you can buy for stuffed animals whenever you stuff them um, to push out your corner so you can have a nice nice straight corner and nice cor you know pointed corner too and then of course whenever you do anything like that to make your work look better it's always good to press the Press it out a little bit with your fingers, and then just take your iron and also press it. So it'll have a nice flat look to it. Um, and usually when you do these type of projects, you do want to flatten it out, because you're probably going to have a hole somewhere you're going to have to sew shut. And the flatter the fabric is, the easier it is to hand sew some of the stuff too. And it gives it a nice crisp look to it too. So that's another one. Let me see. These are all very simple, but it's nice to know the different ways that you can do these things. Um, the next one I'm going to show you is we're going to um, do a um, rounded edge. So um, I'm going to sew this one, and then I'm also going to sew this one. I'm going to show you what you would need to do. Actually, that's got a wrinkle in it. I'm going to press it just a little bit. And I'll show you what you need to do to keep from having bulk on like um, when you're doing clothing a lot of times um, you're going to have a lot of curves and stuff in it. So there's lots of things that you need to do to keep it from having um, the, the stuff pucker on you. So um, let me show you real quick. 
how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the edge of this one. And like with all the other ones, you want to do it a little bit of a reversing and a couple of stitches. See, I'm not pushing my fabric in. You always want, and I'm making sure my needles are not near the area where I'm sewing. You just want to guide your fabric. And you really do want to practice with doing um, sewing things that have curved edges to it. Because that sewing something with a straight edge is a lot easier. And I'm going to take this one out because it's going to be too close. Um, than sewing stuff that has a curved edge to it. if you do any sleeves or anything like that um, whenever you're sewing um, you're gonna have curved edges to it so you need to get um, used to doing that all right so got that one sewn and then I'm gonna sew this other one so I can show you what you need to do as far as um, what how you would cut it this one I'm sewing on the inside edge. Get my needle out there. Actually, I need something to put those in so I don't have those roll off the counter. I don't want those to end up in the floor. <laughs> You don't ever want your needles to fall in the floor, especially if you have pets or kids. So you don't want, want them to get a hold of your needles. At home I have a, a magnetized holder for my needles that I can throw them in. show you real quick how we should cut these. Alright, I'm going to switch back over here. The reason, the reason I keep switching back and forth, um, a lot of times I'm over here with the iron and a lot of times you need, you need to use your iron to um, flatten out the uh, seams. On these particular ones we won't have to do that. Okay, so if you're doing one where you've sewn that edge um, on this one, there's a couple of different things you can do. You can use your pinking shears and cut the edge. Or, a lot of times, you may just want to, just a little snip, you don't snip all the way to the where you've sewn, but really close to the edge. And you want to space it out. And I know you can't really see them, but about an inch or so. So whenever you, um, it'll make it not pucker as much. Let's see if I can pull it apart. That's one way of doing it whenever you turn it. Because that way it will move and and if you don't cut it then it won't have that smooth round edge to it whenever you turn it right side out. So that's one one thing you can do with it. I love the pinking shears so generally I like to... I think clothing is mostly what you're going to do where you're going to just snip the edge. Um, this You might use these um, pinking shears on other things. It just depends. Um, but you would just do the same thing. I like to use the pinking shears because not only does it make it easier to turn, 
but um, it also, um, if you have bulky fabric, it cuts down on the bulk of it whenever you turn it right side out. So, and I'm going to show you how to do um, top stitching on that too, because you do want to top stitch your work a lot of times. It does give it a best, better, cleaner look to it. So if you were doing a project, and another thing I didn't really show you that I probably should have showed you um, is to line up your designs. I didn't do that with this one, but um, to make it look better, I should have cut it where all of these were um, lined up together instead of not. Um, I wasn't really, since it wasn't a, really a project, I wasn't paying attention. You always want to do that with clothing and so forth. Um, it makes it look so much better if you can get the pattern lined up. Okay, and it always gives it a nice, better look whenever you do um, the iron, too. All right, so with this type, that it's, it's this direction, then um, you can't just do the normal snips. You actually have to cut this way kind of like a little triangle. So you're going to cut little triangles out. And you're going to space them out about like you did on um, the other one. And um, you'll notice if you buy any patterns that the patterns will actually have places in them where you're supposed to put these little triangles. So you, you'll want to cut it like that all the way around and space it out about an inch or so all the way around and that also helps to make sure that when you turn it right side that the fabric will do what it's supposed to do um, without getting real bulky on you and so forth so because um, usually you'll do these on like a clothing because um, it's going to go around your shoulder or something or sleeve so always watch that on the patterns to see where you have to put the because you'll see it in the pattern it'll show little little marks like that and that's it's telling you where to put them whenever um, you're cutting out your pattern um, so that's what you have to do on those types and um, and you can talk I'm not going to top stitch everything but you would do a, a single top stitch on this also it just gives it a very nice clean look to it alright and I'm going to show actually I can show it with one of the ones I've already sewn um, well it might not look that great if I do that let's see hmm you may not be able to see it. I think I'm going to use some different fabric so you can actually see it. I'm going to take these two. There's different decorative ways of doing it too. So I'm going to take these two and just and do a, a seam on it. And then I'm going to show you some top stitching. Let's pick that up just a little bit. So you can... I'm just going to quickly... Yeah. And got to make sure that's in between. And start with your needle in the fabric. This one, um, you would of course, again like I showed you earlier, um, need to press out your seam before we do the top stitching. So we're going to press, I'm going to just press it with my fingers instead of using an iron since I'm in a hurry. But you would press it out where it's nice and flat. And then you do, um, there's two different, top, if you're going to have your fabric laying flat like this, then you're going to top stitch over the top here. And we need to know where our needle is going to fall, so I'm going to 
lower it and that's going to hit the middle and I don't want it to hit the middle I want it to hit it to the side of the seam because I'm going to actually do a seam down both sides and this is just different ways of doing seams because it it's decorative um, it just depends on what you're looking for in the project some things you'll need to reinforce more or sometimes you want it, it to be more decorative and you want it to be seen. Um, mostly you're going to do this whenever you want it to be um, more reinforced. Okay. So you would just sew down one side. Okay, and I'll show you. And I just sewed down one side of the seam. I know I got strings everywhere. And then you're going to lower that and see where your needle's going to fall to see if that's where you want it. If you want it to be over a little bit more. Nope, I don't like that. That was not going to hit where I wanted it. So we're going to move it. Just, I want it to be a little more even with the other side. I'm doing this very quickly so it's probably not going to be real lined up. So this is the type that you would reinforce uh, both sides and you're also sewing through um, that's why you have to iron down your seam on the other side so it's sewing down on, through both pieces of fabric. And so that just gives it a more reinforced um, you know look and seam and everything to it. Because um, you'll, you'll see that on some clothing that they do that too. All right, so that's another one. Oops, sorry. And um, the next one, it's um, it's called it's called a flat seam. And I'm gonna grab some more fabric to sew. And you wanna, of course, always have the wrong wrong sides facing up and of course your right sides facing each other so I'm gonna line mine up okay so I've double checked to make sure that the right sides are facing each other and with this one I'm gonna double check it says um, this one's a lot stronger so I need to sew it um, with a half an inch uh, seam to it. So I need something to measure. Let's see here. I need to. I don't see any tape measures laying around. Hmm. I'm gonna. I'll get the closest thing I have. So. If we want to measure a half an inch, um, just right there. All right, you can move your needle around. Let's see. So I can move it all the way to the left, and I can't see because of the cameras in the way. Um, you've noticed I've moved my needle over. Let's see. I can't see what it's doing. Okay and it's all the way over. I'm gonna move my fabric out of the way so we can see. But if you wanna do a half an inch seam, I wanna double check it with this. I wish I had a smaller one. Um, I wanna see where my needle is gonna fall. Okay, so there's my needle, and that's gonna give me, let's see, where's the, and you've got measurements here this shows one inch, so darn this camera, <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to move y'all back just a little bit so I can see what's going on. Because you're going to have measurements on here, and that says three-fourths, that's a half. Okay, there's the half. 
So I'm going to double check that. And it all depends on where your needle, at what position you have your needle on. So I'm double checking it. I'm lining it up with my half mark right here. And then I'm looking at the, where my needle is falling. And let me put that down so I can kind of see. And that's not hitting the half inch mark. So I need to move my needle until it's, oops, because that shifted on me just a little bit, until it's going to hit the half inch mark. Okay, so it, my um, position, I'm going to show you real quick. Now that I've double checked that, up here is what, how I was moving my needle around. So it's on the number two in order to give me my half inch um, seam. And that sometimes is going to make a difference um, on if you need to be really exact about your seams, um, especially with um, quilting, you're going to have to make sure that um, double check and make sure everything's um, lined up the way it's supposed to. So now um, I'm going to line my fabric up with that line, that half inch line. And I don't think my fabric's real straight, but I'm going to double check it. This is straight enough to show you how to do this type of seam. Okay. So you're going to look at your lines there because I've already, I'm going to line it up with that line. And then also you've got marks down here too to, to help you line it up. Okay, so that's a, quite a bit further in than I wanted to do. I'm going to bring it out. And always double check your threads to make sure they didn't go inwards, which mine are really, really short right now. You don't want them to be short because they'll go back into the machine. So I'm going to pull them out to make sure it's not going to take it up. Okay, so I'm wanting a half inch. So I'm going to back, back up. Well, I'm not too far. I'm going to go forward. And then I'll back up. I wish this backup button was not where the camera is located. Okay. I'm trying to keep my fabric lined up with that half inch mark. And then I'll back up. Okay. There we go. So now I've got my half half inch seam and you can always double check it with your ruler to make sure and this one you can kind of see through it so um, yep it's it's I've got it lined up with my half inch because there's my half inch mark there all right so now that I've done that um, I kind of hate moving back and forth, so I'm gonna. I'm just gonna stay over here a little bit. Um, so you're gonna fold it out. For this one, I'm just gonna kind of press it with my fingers. It's. It would work better if you pressed it with an iron. It would have a nice crisp look to it. But I'm just gonna press it with my fingers just to do that. And I need to get some scissors. So let me grab some of them real quick. And I probably will have to iron it a little bit. Okay, with this one, um, you need the half inch seam and then um, press uh, one edge that cut the other edge uh, to an eighth of an inch. Okay, so an eighth of an inch. Okay, I don't think this particular one has that on there. Um, so we're going to fold it over, press one edge of the seam flat, and cut the other edge. That's right. I'm trying to look to see how to do this again. All right. Um, so a lot of times... Let's see here. Um, so they want us to cut um, the seam. 
How am I going to do this on camera? <laughs> I keep wanting to pull this into my lap and do it because it's kind of hard to do it this way. Because you're going to cut some of this. I don't think I'm going to be real straight. I wish you could have. I could have done this before I sewed it because it's going to be really hard to do. Hmm. I'm going to have to take that off camera for a second so I can I think because you're going to fold it over. Uh, I might not be able to do that one because it's, it's a little too difficult to do it on camera. I didn't realize that was going to be so hard to because I need both hands and okay. Well, we're not going to worry about that one too much. Um, because that's like a double flat seam. Let's see. Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this other one, too. All right. Oh, and I need to cut that off. I'm going to cut off this. I wish I had someone that could do my do my camera for me while I do this because I didn't know how hard it would be to do it by myself. Okay, so I'm going to cut this so I can do a different one for you real quick. I need a straight edge and this one does not have a straight edge. Let's move those out of the way. A rotary cutter and one of these. And I highly recommend these because they, they help you a lot on getting straight edges on your fabric. The rotary, well, the rotary cutter and the, the mat and the, the measuring. I don't like this mat though. Mine at home doesn't seem to get, stuff doesn't seem to get caught on it. Like this one has a lot of difficulty. Maybe it's the rotary cutter is not very, I don't think it's very sharp. Probably need a new one. Usually cuts through much better than that. But you always do want to flatten out your seam whenever you're working on anything. And so this one, it's showing you that you can fold this over and there's a couple of different ways that you can do this one. I need to iron it down, but um, you can either, depending on how you want it to show, if you want a straight stitch, we can do a straight stitch over the top here, or um, you can do it um, with the zigzag stitch. Um, it says for thick fabrics you need only make a single hem uh, at the fold. Um, let's see. Over sew the edge of the fabric, draw a half inch line and make a straight line stitch. But to reinforce it, you'll do a straight line stitch here and then come back over and do a zigzag stitch to reinforce it. But that's only if you um, want it to show because it's going to show on the other side of the fabric and you don't necessarily always want that to happen. Um, and I'll show you real quick on that one, but I'm, I want to get some other fabric prepped so I don't have to keep going back and forth like this. Because um, the other, the French seam is something that you would do. I wish I had some sheer fabric to show you how to do that one. But um, with a French seam, uh, you actually... Um, Long sides together and pin the machine pin and machine single sti stitch half inch from the edge of the fabric. Um, they don't actually show you how to do that though. Hmm. Um, their pictures are kind of confusing. Um, actually, I could probably do it with this one. If you have sheer fabric. Um, you would still sew your your seam like this, but um, with sheer fabric, when you fold it back this way, we're going to sew across like right here, and that kind of um, holds the um, raw edges on the inside 
of your seam and um, I wish I really wish I had some sheer fabric because um, that makes it look a lot nicer so that's like a French seam they'll actually do like normal they'll they'll sew um, the right sides together like this but then they fold it over and then they sew over the top here so you kind of like have an, an edge that kind of sticks up like that and they do that with sheer fabric not this is cotton you wouldn't normally unless it was a look you were going for with it with the project that you were working on um, I guess you would do that if you were doing like a pillow and you had um, uh, the what do they call it the where it has a rolled edge to it on the on the edge of your cushion I can't think of the word that you would call that right now all right so I'm gonna move on to um, like a mitered edge corners um, because I think y'all kind of get the gist as far, I mean, I shouldn't have to, I could show you how you just sew it over the top, but that's, that's basically what you do with that one. And then if you're wanting to have nice mitered edge um, to your fabrics, you're really going to have to use your iron for this part. So I'm going to move over here. I've already kind of done it a little bit with this one where I've ironed it. So you're going to start off and you're going to fold your edge twice. And um, generally you want to measure it to make sure that you're doing the same measurements on both edges. So I'll go ahead and grab this just to... And eh, that's not quite right. You want to have an actual fourth of an inch I think I did it here, but then I folded it again. I don't think I kept with a fourth of an inch. So you want to make sure you stay within that. I think I went larger than a fourth of an inch whenever I folded it the second time. And it's trying to keep that what I folded earlier because I had ironed it. So you'll fold it over twice on both edges and I think my iron is having to heat up again because it was off. Yeah, it was off so it's not very hot right now. But, okay, that's nice and hot. So you would roll one edge that way and this edge is not straight so I'm going to do it from this end because this edge is straighter. And so you want to make sure that you fold it over by a fourth of an inch this way too. Because you want both edges to match up. Because if you don't do them the same, um, same size, then when you go to do your corner, it's not going to work. So... doing this kind of quickly. Okay. So once you've got it ironed out like that, then you're going to fold it back. And it's going to have made some marks for you whenever the fold marks here. Turn it up so you can see. Um, you're going to end up with a lot of bulk on the corner unless you cut some of this. So they say to fold it. I want to keep it as close as possible. I'm going to just show you what. I'm not going to cut this corner yet, but um, we're going to cut the corner because you don't want to have a whole lot. Sometimes it works. This fabric's kind of thin, so it might work with this fabric. But sometimes the fabric's really thick and you'll have to cut it. But let me see how it's going to fold. But once we get it folded, you'll have a nice corner to it. Because you've used the fold marks from when you ironed it to keep it nice and straight. So now you have a nice mitered edge. And it's really not that bulky, so I don't think I really need... Ooh, almost 
burn myself because this one gets really hot. So that that's how you get an, a mitered edge. And then when you go to sew it, I'll just show you real quick how to sew it down. And I'm going to use go ahead and use white thread. Usually you wouldn't want it to show on some fabric like this. I would probably use black thread or a color that was really close to um, this this the color of this fabric. So I'm going to line this up and I want to see where my needle is going to fall so I'm going to lower it down. I want it as close to the edge as possible which that that's right where I want it. And with these, you would also back stitch to reinforce. And when you get to your corner, you might have to manually turn it a few times just to make sure you don't go too far. And then you'll turn it. And you're going to look and see, did it get go as far as you wanted to? Did you get to the corner like you wanted? And I'm having trouble seeing that right now. Nope, I'm not quite there. So I'm going to manually hit it again because you want to be right there on the seam of where you folded it. Okay. And you can do this type of thing, having miter edges like this. You can use this um, for, like, if you wanted to have um, placemats or napkins. And, of course, you would want to use um, a thread that wouldn't show up as much. Unless you wanted it to be decorative, um, then you could um, go with a, a coordinating um, thread that actually a color that was already in the fabric instead of white. I'm just doing this so you can see it. But... Um, that's how you do a miter edge and um, I was gonna leave the last few minutes if there anyone was watching that had any questions about just sewing questions in general um, actually I don't know if my comments was working again I'm gonna put um, a comment real quick because I think Facebook did an update where yeah I've been having yeah, I've been having comments. Well, no, it's just been okay. So people were waving, and Angela and Terry waved. I wonder why it doesn't pop up anymore unless I I make a comment myself. Hmm, that's kind of irritating. Because <laughs> if people had been asking me questions while the program was going on, I wouldn't have any idea that they were asking. Um, but uh, that's all I was going to cover this week. Um, and this is going to be the last one of my sewing 101 class um, I may gosh I hit the camera there I may do more sewing classes um, it just won't be called sewing 101 I'm gonna switch the camera over alright and um, I'm probably gonna be doing some other programs uh, just not necessarily um, just about sewing so it'll, it'll be some kind of craft I'll probably cover. And if there's a craft that you're interested in that you'd like to know more about, um, just make a comment on this video or you could send an instant message to the our library page, our Facebook library page, and just say, hey, I would like to see a program about this craft or or this, this particular, I guess, um, part of this type of craft. I mean, it, may, it can be very specific if you want, what you'd want, want us to cover. Um, I would be up for just about any kind of sewing type thing, or um, uh, if you wanted to see, like I said earlier, stuff on basic embroidery, basic um, cross stitch, um, just any kind of type other craft that you'd be interested in. I could even do one on spinning. Um, with a drop spindle, um, and uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some stuff, but um, 
on Thursday nights at 7 during the Crafting with Opal, um, we already do um, beginning sewing projects on that one. Sometimes we do um, painting programs. Um, I did crochet, beginning crochet last night, and I'll do next month. At some point, I'll do a beginning knitting one. For that program, you can actually, or the programs on Thursday nights, um, we do offer supplies for that. And um, all you have to do is call to, to get on uh, the list for the supplies for it. I just ask that if you're going to get on the supply list, to pe please get on the list by at, le at least the before we close on Tuesday because that will give me a chance to get the supplies together on Wednesday for you. So you'll be able to pick them up either sometime late Wednesday or early Thursday. Um, so I, that's all I ask is to please, if you do want supplies for that one, to not wait till the day of the program and then want, want supplies for it because that's a little too late for me to know because a lot of times I don't work in the branch very much on Thursday because of the program that I do at nighttime. So, um, uh, so I won't, like I said, I won't be doing the Sewing 101 anymore on Fridays, but, um, and it may not be an every Friday program, but I'm going to do some kind of Friday program maybe once a month or every, or twice a month or something like that. Um, unless I come up with an idea that there's lots of things I could do with it that would make it where I could do it every Friday. So um, if no one has any questions, then um, I'm going to go and uh, see y'all next time. And if you come to the Crafting with Opal programs um, this month or through the end of Summer Reading Club for next month, which I think is like the the third or fourth uh, Thursday, I think will be one of the last ones, I'm going to be doing giving giveaways during that, that program. And it's at the end of the program, and you have to stay to the end to uh, sign up to try to win something, okay? So see y'all later. Bye.